welcome to Blue Sky Automotive. This is another video for this F250. Uh, we got the heads on on the last video. Now we're gonna set the timing. Before putting the heads on, we got our cams uh, pretty close to where they need to be. You want this, uh, needs to come over just a little, but uh, 12 o'clock on the left-hand cam uh, driver's side and then about 11 o'clock on the uh, passenger side the right hand cam about 11 and then this goes to about 11 but it, you also notice this notch here on the uh, crank gear that's uh, what is that 12 6 so that'd be at 6 o'clock um, but we kind of already set this you know top dead center on cylinder number one we already set that uh, and then we got these pretty much where they need to be all right so we are putting brand new chains on this vehicle whole new timing kit if you are reusing your chain and you can't see where the uh, marks are to line up on the uh, timing gears then what you can do what the manual has you do is down here you see how there's two together mark those and then at the other end there's one by itself mark that so mark one mark two and and that's your your marks to set up the timing the long bolt goes in the bottom of this on the left hand side Those are torqued to 89 inch pounds. So I was trying to figure out why it wasn't working on this end. This is the new chain guide. Uh, if you notice, here, let me pop it out. Um, see how fat that is? This goes uh, for this up here. Um, and you see, see how fat that is? So the bolts, let me show you. Um, they don't stick my orientation they don't stick through far enough when you compare it with the old one yes it it's about the same thickness but this recesses in there so now when you put the bolt in see how much room you have so not sure uh, why this is like that um, the other side you know worked just fine is just this one and you can't you can't um, swap out because this this goes in deeper than this here so I'm gonna reuse the old uh, chain guide it looks good there's nothing wrong with it um, so that's interesting with this little discrepancy on this one I just made sure everything else looked good uh, chains are the same size the um, tensioners uh, look good so uh, that's just a weird weird component uh, right here but anyway so we start with the left hand or the driver's side chain first. The two marks, because the chain will have two marks and then the one mark. The two marks go over the cam, the one mark goes over the crank. So we could just go ahead and feed that on. Left hand goes first. There we go. So let, let me zoom you in closer. See on the top, we got that mark in between the two. This is gonna be our straight. There's not gonna be much slack on this side, little, but not a lot. And then the bottom one, we want it to mark right there on that back uh, sprocket set, but right there. So that is good. And then we want the looseness to be under this dowel. All right, so now we can go ahead and put our uh, tensioner guide on and then our tensioner. So the left hand uh, tensioner arm has this little little bump here next to that dowel hole. So that's how you identify the left. If you look at the right, there's nothing. Left, you see that. And then uh, this hole is also different. On the right hand side, they're just two little uh, pinholes. On this side, it's more of a notched uh, hole. 
So that can go on. And now our tensioner can go on. Now our tensioners, there is an L and an R. And then these are torqued to 18 foot pounds. Okay, this was a complete pain to put it back in. Um, it was a combination of this being out just a little, this guide being out, uh, and then a pry bar right up here on the top of it. Um, and that gave me enough to get it in. So it is in, uh, but that uh, was a lot of work. A little more prying just underneath this head lip uh, against this to get these bolts uh, in their little hole. All right, we'll do the exact same thing to the other side. Have to turn the cam just a little to get it to match up up top. There we go, ever so slightly, we're marked on the bottom, we're marked on the top. Now we can turn the cam back just a little to tighten up this, this side here, so all our slack is on the bottom. Now we can put our tensioner arm on. double check your cam marks make sure they line up on both come down double check your uh, crank mark we are good we can go ahead and pull the grenade pins and it should be tight now what we want to do is turn the crank one full revolution uh, to make sure everything is still uh, kosher and nothing's binding up or anything All right, that is one full cam revolution, two crank revolutions. Everything felt good. Now we can go ahead and prep for the timing cover to go back on. Now for the timing cover, we just want to make sure that our channel for our gasket is nice and clean. Um, anywhere that there was silicone, like on this bottom face, there may have been in the corners. Uh, up top, there'd be silicone, and somewhere here, there may be silicone in, in between. Uh, just get that cleaned off real good, all surfaces real good. Uh, and that's pretty much all the prep for this. We'll put the gaskets back in their holes. Um, and then we're gonna put in a new seal. Now's the perfect time for it. Uh, this, you know, this is still pretty malleable, but you know, we're here, a seal's a couple bucks. So uh, I'm waiting for that to come. In the meantime, let's go back to the engine. Uh, let's put our balance shaft back on. If you notice, uh, hold on. On the back of the cam gear, let me get in a good position on the back of the cam gear. You see that dot? Where is it? Uh, right there. There's a little dot on the back of the cam gear. So that's our mark we want to line up. Now this is the, the balance shaft, and you can see on this gear, there's also that dot. So we want to do our best to line that dot up. The manual has you mark over here um, that same mark, and that can help with um, kind of eyeballing it and, and seeing it line up as we put it in. So I'm going to clean this off of oil the best I can and put a little mark where that dot is and then we'll go install it. After cleaning off the oil I noticed there's actually a mark on this back side. So a dot on the front right there and then a mark on the back already there. Um, so I'm just going to mark it with a marker so it's more pronounced. Um, but that's the mark we need to line up with the dot on the cam. 
before we put our balance shaft in, we want to go ahead and lube up uh, these caps. Just to show you some redundancy, I also marked the tooth. Uh, so now that's a gold tooth. And then I did the same thing on this side, just marked it gold. So the two golds should line up. All right, so I got it lined up. Let me see if I could show you what it looks like. Can you see that? The top and the bottom gold line up with each other. So that's what you want. So now the balance shaft is ready to get uh, torqued down. Uh, remember, the caps go in the order they came off. Um, so I marked mine one, two, and then I didn't mark that one. And then I marked the front with a dot. So they go back in the same orientation, not accidentally uh, wrong. Uh, and then you want to go ahead and lube this up as well before we put the caps over the top of them. Balance shaft is back on and torqued 89 inch pounds. Just want to show you how I do these oil seals. It's really easy, especially when it's off the vehicle. But the old one, usually you could just punch out from the back. Just like that, no problem. Then I'll lubricate a little on the inside. Lubri and I'll lubricate uh, the outside of the seal so it goes in nice and smooth. And then I'll take my ball joint kit and I'll get the fitting that fits perfectly uh, over the top of this. You can see how it just, just fits perfect. The exact uh, size. And then over the top of the ball joint uh, fitting, you just have this little step adapter that goes over the top. Now you could just hit in the center and it'll get pretty evenly uh, around and that'll drive it in. So let's flip this over. Rubber seal, so I'll use a silicone lubricant. Probably not required, I just like to use it. I heard that somewhere. Using silicone on rubbers it works out good. So I just put a little on the outside. Doesn't take a lot. Oop. And a little in here. New seal is in, you want it just below uh, the surface on this outer uh, shell, the case, just below that lip, uh, and we're good to go. All right, so our gasket is put on. Uh, Felpro did a really good job. That gasket fits in there so nice. It feels good, um, but not sponsoring Felpro. I just really liked how it locked in. On the engine, we want to put our um, ring back that's for the crank uh, sensor so you want to make sure that that's on and then we're gonna put silicone right there or RTV right there right there so that seals up the corners of our oil pan and then the corners of the head where the head meet the block we'll put a bead there bead there bead there and bead there so one two three four five six locations Alright, so it was just easier to show you my screen than to take a picture of this and then display it. So, this is where it's showing you to put the uh, RTV. Then we go ahead and put the cover back on with the new gasket. Now it's saying tighten the fasteners uh, in three stages. Stage one, tighten the fasteners one through five to 18 foot-pounds. And then it gives you a diagram. So you could pause here. One through five, 18 foot-pounds. Then stage two, tighten fastener six and seven to 35 foot pounds. And then stage three, tighten fasteners eight through 15, uh, also to 35 foot pounds. Let's install the bolts, then tighten in two stages in the sequence shown. Oh, so that, that's for the oil pan. So the oil pan has you also do a two stage process. Uh, tighten uh, to 15 foot pounds, and then tighten an additional 90 degrees. So that's what that's that's talking about.
All right, we got the timing cover back on. Everything's tight and torqued down. Um, we're gonna go ahead in this episode, uh, put the valve covers on, because there's really not much to it. We're gonna blow out uh, the top of the head, and then we're gonna oil all the, all the lobes, all the cam lobes on both sides, blow it out, oil the lobes, uh, and then we could put our valve covers on. Now the valve cover, we want new gaskets and then new grommets for um, the bolts. Just wanted to show you two things. One, the Felpro gasket. The new valve cover uh, gasket. Felpro is metal uh, encased in rubber. It doesn't lock in to its grooves on the valve cover. So we're gonna have to put a little silicone in the groove uh, just enough to hold it in because once you tip the valve cover over to put it on uh, it could fall out and we don't want that um, so that's a bummer but either way I, I really wanted to show you getting these old uh, grommets off the best way I've found is to use a tool like this this is just um, for trim clips but you could put it in between like that and then just push down on the table it'll pop over you just pull it off it'll pop over that that lip and it makes pretty light work of these otherwise they can be kind of a, a pain but you just pop them over that piece with this tool and it's pretty quick so on the head side um, I plugged those holes up because now we're done tearing things off. So if anything falls in those holes, uh, that would be devastating. Um, we'd have to pull the head back off if it fell actually in the cylinder. So uh, got those plugged off. Um, I put that that um, water hose. Remember there are two bolts back there. Those are back on. That ground strap is back on, and the um, transmission dipstick is back on. So. We want to RTV right here, and the same on the other side where the timing cover and the head meet. Uh, and that's all the places we need a silicone. Now we're ready to put the um, valve cover back on. So I'm pulling it back out because the electrical has to get sloughed over before the valve cover because there's not enough room between this box and the valve cover. So the tightening pattern for the valve cover is pretty much the same as the head bolts. Um, they are torqued to 89 inch pounds. So you just go through one time 89 inch pounds, but that pattern as far as where you start and where you end is very similar. All right, so I put the other valve cover on off camera. It's the same thing as this side, uh, same torque, 89 inch pounds, uh, same pattern and everything. So that is where we are, the end of the day. All right, that will wrap up this episode. We got the timing set, the timing cover on, and the valve covers back on. So that's a big win uh, for the day. Um, so putting the heads on, getting everything prepped, heads on, and where we are uh, was just one uh, other day. So, so far we've invested two days. Ugh, look at these things. Uh, so far we've just invested two days uh, into this work. Now, of course the heads, uh, had to be done um, so that did take time but in that span uh, we weren't working on the truck so uh, which actually brings me to a reminder I keep thinking but forgetting to say is if you want this um, done sooner then you can buy remanufactured heads just buy them ahead of time um, you know you're paying for that convenience and that speed uh, for these pair to be done at the um, machine shop 
for the pair cost the same as one remanufactured. Um, so that's just something to think about. But if you know, you're investing in this, you want it done sooner, you can, before you even start, have the heads uh, on hand and, and you're good to go. Uh, and then it's just tear down, put back up, um, so you don't have to wait in between. Anyway, um, I, again, not much um, to, not re not much to this thing. You're just, you know, torquing it down. You're g getting the timing just right. Uh, I did struggle with this um, uh, timing chain tensioner, getting it in, but with just a little little pry bar, it it slipped in, uh, no problem. Um, well. Uh, wiggling it and fighting with it but but that's that was the trick uh, pry bar um, that harness on this side on the passenger side had to get up and over the head before putting the valve cover on otherwise there wouldn't be any room to get that um, over after the valve cover was on um, I, I think that's it I don't know what to tell you this engine has been uh, pleasure to work on um, everything's been very uh, straightforward very simple uh, so far no special tools and really um, what else is there I, I can't foresee any special tools needed maybe the uh, the uh, crank pulley when that comes on but really uh, setting the timing and all of that there are no special tools that are required these cams and it's because there's so many cylinders that the, the cam doesn't want to move it's so locked in there um, it, it doesn't want to move on you so that's not even an issue um, all right well I'm gonna wrap it up uh, wash my hands take a shower it's been a hot sweaty day so um, but I feel good at this point all right thanks for watching uh, like subscribe see you on the next one